Hi guys, Ian Johnson from DriverSuccess.com. Today I want to talk about how your company should go about defining its specific inventory carrying costs. And then we're going to take that amount and we're going to divide it by the square footage in your warehouse in order to define your specific inventory carrying costs per square foot. And then we're going to end it off by explaining why that number is such an important indicator in terms of how you measure your supply chain, your warehouse, and your inventory management practices. Okay. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to go over a table that's available on my website, uh, driversuccess.com. This is basically from a sample Excel spreadsheet that allows you to define your specific inventory carrying costs. Okay? So basically I'm going to go through this table. I'm going to show you basically what these inventory cost drivers are and how you go about defining what your monthly inventory carrying costs are and then defining what your carrying costs are per square foot. Okay? So in this example, this company has accounted for the inventory value on hand, and this value is a monthly amount, okay? So the monthly inventory value on hand that they carry month to month throughout the entire year is $1 million. Next, they have to account for their cost to finance inventory, which is a cost of capital and the cost to borrow money in order to finance uh, the purchase of raw materials and all these other things. So the cost of money in this case, the Excel spreadsheet is going to allow you to input your specific cost of capital. And in this example, it's 4%. Once you input that 4%, it'll occupy the field and input $40,000. Okay? The rest of these cost drivers, you have to basically account for on your own. Now, in this case, this customer or this company has basically looked at the cost of scrapping inventory. In this, in this example, a lot of times companies basically just have to write off inventory. They can't even sell it for scrap. They just got to write it off. So this example, they had to do that. It cost them $50,000. Cost of electricity and miscellaneous warehouse costs. A lot of times that pertains to, you know, temperature control based on the type of products you're holding. Uh, the cost of damage, the longer you hold products in your warehouse, the more likely they become, become damaged. Cost of obsolescence, the longer you hold product that you're not selling, the less likely your market's gonna, gonna wanna purchase it, so you're gonna have this issues with obsolete product offerings. And then you got pilferage, which just amounts to theft. That's a big issue with business to consumer markets. Uh, the cost of insurance, cost of payroll and overtime, and in this case, overtime, a lot of times companies have to cover, um, you know, overtime because they've had an inventory stock out and they have, to, they have to pay their employees overtime to ship and receive urgent shipments, okay? So basically, this Excel spreadsheet allows you to input your specific inventory cost drivers and account for your specific costs. In this example, the customer is covering 40,000, 50,000, 50,000, 20, 70, 30, 50,000, 50,000 for a grand total of $360,000 a year based on a monthly inventory value of $1 million. Now, most companies, when they see this, they're flabbergasted. They can't possibly imagine why inventory would cost them that much. But this amount has to be divided by the 12 months in a year. And when you do that, you come out to the standard that is applied to the inventory value on hand on a monthly basis. Okay? And in this case, monthly inventory carrying costs are on average 2 to 3% of the inventory value on hand. Okay? So it's common for companies to apply 2 to 3% to the inventory value on hand as a cost to carry that inventory. Now, the reason why you've got to determine your specific inventory carrying costs is because you may be closer to this 2, or you may be closer to this 3, or you may be even way above 3. But it's important to understand what your specific cost drivers are. So how do you turn this into a carrying cost per square foot? Well, in our example, the company's warehouse, okay, is basically 500 square feet, 500 feet long, sorry, 500 feet long, 200 feet deep. So we're going to take 500 times 200, and that means that their warehouse uh, square footage is 100,000 square feet. Okay? So their carrying cost, cost per square foot, is going to be $360,000 divided by 100,000 square feet, and that's going to give them a cost of $3.60 for every single, every single square foot in their warehouse. It costs them $3.60 in terms of a carrying cost per square foot. Okay? So, basically, 
if you focus on reducing your carrying costs and you focus on reducing the issues of damage, obsolescence, pilferage, and reduce the incidence of overtime, you'll reduce your carrying costs per square foot. Now, why is this such an important indicator? The reason why this is such an important indicator is because it allows companies to define the cost of carrying products that aren't selling as well as products that sell fast, okay? So let's say, for example, of this 100,000 square foot warehouse, okay, you have product that basically sells and 80,000 square feet of your warehouse is, is occupied by products that come in your, into your warehouse and immediately go out. They have a high inventory turnover rate in and out very quickly, okay? But you've got 20% or 20,000 square feet basically allocated to product that doesn't sell as quickly. A lot of companies faced with this situation say, you know what, we need more warehouse space because we've got to be able to account for more warehouse we have to be able to have more warehouse space in order to continually sell these products. We don't, have enough, we don't have enough shelf space to account for these products that sell so quickly. So we have to go out and get more warehouse space. Well, you can't really base any decision on whether you should do that until you have an understanding of what your inventory carrying cost per square foot, and you compare this cost versus the cost of just holding parts that have been sitting there for months or even years. So your carrying cost per square foot allows you to basically define not only your cost of carrying inventory, but the cost of carrying inventory for products that sell quickly versus products that take longer to sell. Okay, And it allows you to make a decision based on whether or not you should go ahead and get another warehouse to account for the products that are quickly selling immediately, that type of thing. Okay, So that's it, inventory carrying cost per square foot. Ian Johnson, DriverSuccess.com. Bye-bye.